warm welcome to TV Africa News. This is Africa Today. My name is Najuma Luima, but first are the headlines. Uganda to celebrate Women's Day 2021 under the theme Building on Women's Strength for a Better Future in the COVID World. Supreme Court accepts NOOP election petition withdraw. Farmers worried as locust invasion looms ahead of planting. And in sports, Amado Diawara, Frank Casey, shine in Serie A. Now the news in detail. Government has put in place a special task force to respond to gender-based violence cases and violence against children in commemoration of the Women's Day slated for 8th March 2021. Our reporter Nalugo has more. Addressing journalists at the Uganda Media Center in Kampala, the State Minister for Gender, Labor and Cultural Affairs, Honorable Peace Mutuzo, said cases of gender-based violence spiked during the COVID-19 lockdown, which affected mostly women, yet they have played a bigger role in the fight against COVID-19 by looking after their children, their homes and the sick people. According to Mutuzo, the judiciary and the Uganda police force have also increased efforts to handle gender-based violence cases. The judiciary has operationalized special court sessions to handle gender-based violence cases which make up a large pop uh, proportion of the case backlogs. The Uganda Police Force has, through the Child and Family Protection Unit and the Sexual and Gender-Based Violence and the Women's Department, enhanced collaboration with investigation crime cases, including gender-based violence cases. Government has continued to invest in flagship social economic transformation programs in particular, the Uganda Women Entrepreneurship Program, the Social Assistance Grant for Empowerment for Elderly Persons, uh, persons with Disability Grant, the Youth Livelihood Program, Operation Wealth Creation, Promotion of Saving and Credit Cooperatives, EMIOGA, among others. The Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development has sent out guidelines to local government to identify beneficiary groups under WEP and YLP whose operations were affected by the COVID-19 prevention measures. These groups will be refinanced and the repayment of initial loans rescheduled to allow them more time to recover from the income losses they might have incurred during the COVID-19 pandemic. This year's national celebrations will be held under the theme Building on Women's Strength for a Better Future in the COVID World at State House in Tebe, honored by the President of Uganda, His Excellency Yoweri Kagutam Seven, with a few selected individuals and leaders in attendance due to COVID-19. Nalgo Muyingo, Africa Today. Moving on, the Supreme Court has granted leave to Robert Chagulanyi, the petitioner in the presidential election case, to withdraw the petition he filed against President Museveni, the Attorney General, and the Electoral Commission. We have more. While delivering the ruling read by Justice Taylor Arach, the panel of judges say that since all the respondents do concur with the petitioner to withdraw the petition, there is no reason for barring it. Medad Lubega Segona, the lead counsel for the petitioner, while submitting today before a panel of nine justices, led by the Chief Justice Alphonse Owinidolo, asked court to allow the application and also be pleased to order each party to bear its own costs, both for the petition and the application. The court, however, has revealed that it shall give the reasons for allowing this application and the determination of costs in the ruling that will be delivered on notice. It was uh, illegal and irregular, so you cannot reward the, the people arising, I mean services arising out of an irregular or illegal procurement. They used to argue that uh, legal services may be procured anyway, but the court said no, they, they are precedents and we have submitted them. So, we are waiting for the decision of court. I think I'll be able to comment fully after receiving the decision of court. 
However, in a rejoinder, the councils for the respondents all agreed to the prayer for the petition of withdrawing the application and they asked court to award costs for the petition but not the application. Away from that, the National Drug Authority has observed with concern a growing number of advertisements of beverages claiming nutritional and therapeutic value on television, radio and social media. Nahawe reports. Addressing the press at the Uganda Media Center in Kampala on the 5th of March 2021, the Secretary for National Drug Authority, Dr. Nahamia David, said that these advertisements which exaggerate the therapeutic capability of the drinks are not only misleading the public but also put lives of people at risk. Moreover, some of them show inappropriate content. Press statement is about advertising and promotion of beverages and we commonly call them Paris drinks. The National Drug Authority, the Uganda National Bureau of Standards, UNBS, the Uganda Communi Communications Commission, UCC, have observed with concern a growing number of advertisements of products claiming, nutri claiming nutritional and therapeutic value on television radio and social media, even including markets. When you move around in these shift markets, you find there people advertising in cars, even using these uh, mizinda uh, and whatnot. These advertisements, which exaggerate the therapeutic cap capability of the drinks being advertised, are not only misleading the public, but actually putting lives at risk, lives of our people, me inclusive and you inclusive. Moreover, some of them, especially the visual content on TV and social media, portray inappropriate content. Inappropriate in the means misleading and exa being exaggerated. Section 331C of the National Drug Report National Drug Policy and Authority Act, Chapter 206, prohibits the advertisement and publication of information that is calculated to promote the use of a drug for prevention or treatment of any disease or relating to enhancements of human potency. Dr. Nahamia added that the National Drug Authority prohibits the use of drugs for prevention or treatment of any disease or relating to enhancing human potency. It is on this note that Dr. Nahamia said that anyone who advertises or promotes a product with claims of cure, treatment, prevention and modification of diseases or body function is advertising a drunk and should seek the approval of National Drug Authority present with NDA. UNBS and UCC who won all manufacturers of beverages and the media houses engaged in running these deceptive adverts to desist from such practices with immediate effect and any manufacturer caught violating these requirements will face sanctions in accordance with laws of Uganda. Nahabe Kajura, Africa Today. Let's take a very quick short break. We will be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News, The Right to Know. Farmers in Kenya are worried about the suspected threat of invasion by desert locusts throughout the March to main rainfall season as they prepare their gardens for planting. Kachanchu reports. 
With the onset of the long rains projected for the next week in most parts of the country, farmers who are busy preparing for planting in Kenya are not jolly due to the threat of another invasion of desert locusts, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, which has been in the forefront in fighting the menace. If rains fall, the swarms will quickly mature and lay eggs. The Kenya Meteorological Department says the peak of the rainfall is expected to be in April from the most regions except over the coastal strip where it is expected in May. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya says the government has put in place a spirited fight to ensure that the locusts, especially the ones that have been spotted in the North Rift, are eliminated before the planting time. TV Africa News, Kachanchu Mtabazi reporting. Our from that legislative election scheduled to take place this Saturday in Cote d'Ivoire are in high gear with talks of former President Laurent Gbagbo, who was forced out of office nearly 10 years ago by President Alassane Ouattara. A reporter Nalugo has more. The former president of Ivory Coast, Laurent Gbagbo, with his Ivorian Popular Front Party, has since ended a years long electoral boycott, becoming the engine behind an alliance battling for seats in the National Assembly. According to Bagbo's oldest son, Micho Bagbo, a university academic who is running in a constituency in Abidjan, the elections mark the return of Laurent Bagbo in his political organization in institutional politics. Watara ignited political unrest last year when he announced he would seek a third term in office, a scheme that critics said sidestepped constitutional limits. Nalgo Muyingo, Africa Today. Moving on, Ghana's president, Nana Akufo Addo, was on Thursday retained as leader following a seven member panel of the country's top court judges' dismissal of the election petition filed by main opposition leader, John Mahama. Nahawe has more. In anonymous decision, the Supreme Court said this is because the case had no merit. Former President John Dramani Mahama, who contested the 2020 elections on the ticket of the National Democratic Congress, took the Electoral Commission to court, challenging the validity of results and sequent declaration of President Akufo Addo as the winner. But reading the ruling of the court on Thursday, Chief Justice Anin Yoba said the petitioner did not satisfy all the five issues outlined by the court to determine the case. According to the Electoral Commission, President Nana Akufo Addo was re-elected with 51.59% of the vote against 47.36% for his predecessor and opponent John Dramani Mahama of the main opposition NDC. Only 515,524 votes separated the two candidates. Reporting for TV African News, Nahawe Kajira. Let's once again take a very quick short break. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching TV Africa News, The Right to Know. In our business news today, surrounded by thousands of live scorpions in a laboratory deep in Egypt's western desert, Ahmed Abu al Sawed carefully handles one of the carved tailed arachnids before extracting a drop of its venom in search for money. Let's take a look. A mechanical engineer who worked in the oil sector for almost two decades, Abu Al Sudi, decided in 2018 to strike a different path, producing scorpion venom for pharmaceutical research purposes. The 44 year old, clad in a white lab coat, said that he was surfing the internet and saw scorpion venom as one of the most expensive on the market and took advantage of the desert environment where they roam around. 
Biomedical researchers are studying the pharmaceutical properties of scorpion venom, making the rare and potent neurotoxin a highly sought-after commodity now produced in several Middle Eastern countries. The scorpion hunters earn 1 to 1.5 Egyptian pounds, around 6 to 10 cents per animal. Nahawe Kajura, reporting for TV African News. In our health news today, a preliminary study conducted in South Africa has shown that people infected with the variant of the coronavirus, known as the South African variant, have better immunity to other mutations of the virus. A reporter, Nalugo, has more. The study was carried out by the country's scientific team that discovered the variant 501Y.V2 and raises hopes that vaccines modeled on the strain could protect against future mutations. The study, which involved a very small number of people, has yet to be submitted for evaluation by the scientific community. According to data from the study, only 4% of the 55 persons already infected with 501Y.V2 could not overcome infection with the original strain of the coronavirus. The new variant, which is said to be more contagious, was identified in South Africa at the end of last year. It fueled a second wave of infections in the country, with the most COVID-19 confirmed cases on the continent. Nalgo Muyingo, Africa Today. And in sports, Amado Diawara struck late to earn AC Roma a 2-1 win at Fiorentina on Wednesday that keeps them in the hunt for a top-4 finish in Serie A after wing-back Leonardo Spinazzola scored at both ends. Kachanchu reports. Guinean midfielder Diawara turned in Rick Kasdopo's cross in the 88th minute, but was fit. TV Africa News, Kachanchu Mutabazi reporting. Now, before we end our news bulletin today, let's take a recap of our top stories. Uganda to celebrate Women's Day 2021 under the theme Building on Women's Strength for a Better Future in the COVID World. Supreme Court accepts NOOP election petition withdraw. Farmers worried as locust invasion looms ahead of planting. And in sports, Amado Diawara, Frank Casey, shine in Serie A. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it TV Africa. Please do stay tuned. More programming coming your way. This is Africa, and that was the news.